Here we go, the very best green chili soup recipe that you're ever going to get. Howdy folks, welcome to Texas Cooking Today. I'm Stuart Trotter, your host. This is a cooking tutorial for Texas Cooking Today and you've seen what we're about to make. So I'll tell you what, let's get right into it. Well guys, isn't that a beautiful soup? And I'm going to teach you to make it right here on this tutorial. Now, if you're watching this episode, this is a Texas Cooking Today cooking tutorial, and I'm going to teach you how to make a green chili soup. If you're not into a long tutorial that has a lot of detail in it, the previous episode to this one is my short version, and it's lacking a lot of the detail, a lot more like many of the other uh, cooking videos that you'll see. But this tutorial goes into depth on all of the techniques and it will teach you how to pull this recipe off without a hitch. So guys, right here on Texas Cooking Today, I'm going to teach you how to make a soup I developed many years back. And I developed this because I have a love of green chilies and this particular recipe was designed to bring out the best of a green chili soup. So it's a balance of flavors, it's a harmonious group of flavors, and once you've tasted it, you're going to have a new favorite soup on your soup list. So I'll tell you what, without any further waste of time, let's get in on the kitchen there and we're going to cook us up a batch of green chili soup. Come on, let's go. All right, guys, we have wonderful, wonderful ingredients here. So we're going to be using some garlic, our beautiful green chilies, onion. We got some uh, cumin, cornstarch, I'm using olive oil and also some stock. I'm using chicken stock for mine. If you want, you can use vegetable stock. If you want to be a real purist, you can just go with plain old water. But I'll tell you what, I like to use the stock because it brings a richer, more full-bodied flavor to this soup. And it really works very well. So I'll tell you what, guys, let's get into cooking these things up. First thing I do want to mention, these chilies. In this show, you're going to see me scorch the skins off of these chilies here in this tutorial. And if you don't want to do that, you don't have to. But the reason I do this, and it's a very important thing to me, you ever eat in a dish when you've gotten like a tomato skin stuck in your teeth, you pull it out and look at it, and it's like very unsightly, it's not pleasant. Chili skins are that way too. You can eat the chili skins, so they're perfectly fine, they're not going to hurt you, all right? I just don't like the skins in my soup, guys. It's just that simple. So I'm going to get rid of those. Poblanos generally, so you'll know when you're looking for these if you've never bought them. Uh, and if you can't find them, for goodness sake, order them, okay? These are poblano chilies. They're very thick-walled chilies. They don't have a lot of heat to them. Their flavor, not the heat, but the flavor is very similar to that of a jalapeno. But you only have maybe a quarter to, oh maybe a third of the heat at the most that a jalapeno would have in one of these. So a lot more meaty chili, same or very similar flavor, and so good. Some of them are like this. They have two sides to them, and they have two edges and kind of flat. Some are like this, more like a triangular shape where they have three flats and three uh, edges. Either way, it's the same chili, and as you notice, these things are big, okay? I'm using six of these large chilies. If you can only find smaller ones, you might increase your numbers, all right? Now, let's get right into cooking this up. Let's start scorching off these skins. Now, guys, I'm getting ready to scorch the skins off of my chilies, and I wanted to talk to you about different ways of doing this. So you'll know, you can put your chilies on a grill charcoal grill, gas grill, it doesn't matter. Put them on a grill, heat them up. When the skin blisters and pops, it's ready to be washed off. You can char them on a stove, on a gas stove, like what I'm going to do. You can use a torch, a propane torch. If you've got one of these in the garage, in the kitchen, either way, it's fire, all right? Chilies are extremely resistant to heat, so don't be afraid of putting them under really, really harsh, high heat. A broiler. Set your broiler to high, 
Put the chilies under it. When the skins blister on one side, turn them. When they blister on the second side, place those chilies in a plastic bag and sweat them for about five to 10 minutes. The skin will peel right off. Let me show you something. I'm gonna use a torch here. This is gonna get a little noisy, all right? Chilies. This is what we're trying to do. So that's what I'm saying. A torch will work for this if that's all you can find. A campfire will work for this, okay? So, let me turn that off. I will use my torch usually to touch up the edges when I'm finished. The truth is though, you don't have to be perfect about this. Not all of the skin has to be removed. In fact, you don't have to remove any of it if you don't want to. I simply do this because it cleans up my soup and I don't have to worry about skins being in my soup. I just don't like that. Let's get busy cooking these off. I'm gonna turn it on, full blast. These will stop crackling or start crackling and popping in a minute and that's when we know we're getting good blistering. There we go. As I mentioned, these are very resistant to heat. They've been on here for about a minute and a half, roughly. So go ahead, just get them right into the heat. And like I said, any kind of heat works. And once you get them all blistered and scorched, then we move to the next stage. So this is all there is to it, guys. There's not much else to see here other than watching the chilies blister, and that's not too exciting. I think you're gonna love the smell that this creates though. It's absolutely heavenly. However, sometimes it can irritate the, uh, the nose, okay, the eyes. It can cause burning, you know, like when you're, when you're cutting into an onion. So you might want some ventilation when you're doing this. Get a fan blowing or a, a window open, something like that. And that way it becomes a little more tolerable. Even though the smell is nice, it can burn just a little. So, I like just combining my techniques and I get really thorough results. Now guys, when I'm finished charring my chilies and they look something like this, I like to wash that off the outside. Now, some chefs will tell you, oh no, you must gently peel it. Otherwise, you will lose the flavor that is underneath that charred off skin. And I am going to be honest with you, that's absolutely true, you will. So you can either sit here and do this, which frankly, I don't recommend, but you can, uh, or you can just wash it off. That's what I'm going to do. Now, the reason I don't like to do this method is because it still leaves me with little black charred skin flecks in uh, my soup, and I don't like that either. So I just wash it. Now, the other thing is, is in a moment, I wanna show you what I do to the chili after washed. Some people are sensitive to the heat in these, so you might want to wear gloves when doing this. Just gently wash that skin off. Now guys, once I get my skin washed off, get that off my hand, I will poke my finger right through the side, just press straight in on it like that, see? And pull, pull straight down and it'll make a slit. Isn't that neat? You just opened your chili right up. From there, all you have to do is pull back at the crown, all the way around. That crown will come loose. Pull out your seed pod and pull down on those veins. And your poblano is ready to be sliced. There we go, no seeds, no skin, just good poblano meat. Every bit of that is exactly the, the heart of what I want in my soup. And if you're, like I said, if you're worried about losing a lot of flavor, trust me, these things are so robust in flavor, we really didn't lose anything here. I'm just gonna do all of mine the same way. If you would, get yours ready, and then we're gonna slice them. Okay, guys, if you're watching the tutorial version, there's something that I wanted to tip you off to right here. And this is, you know, normally, you know, I like to throw a little bit of extra information and tips in on my shows. And so here's your tip number one. In the event you're ever trying to prepare a chili to be stuffed, okay? You saw what I just did, how I poked my finger in the edge of the chili and pulled down, okay? Just like this. All I need to do now is reach up in the top and pinch that seed pod. Now don't pull down on the veins because if you do, it'll tear the side of the chili right here. Pull upward on those veins and snap them off. Then wash out your seeds. This chili is now open 
and ready to be stuffed. I could stuff this, batter it, deep fry it, and I'm ready to go with all kinds of good stuff. So there you have it. That's your cook along tutorial extra tip when it comes to what you're going to do with those chilies. There's the crown, and I've got a beautiful chili ready to cut up. All right, guys. Now, if you're watching the tutorial, what we've been doing here is what is referred to as garde manze work, which is basically the prep work on the vegetables and stuff like that, the, the cold prep work. And it's a very, very important job because it needs to be done sanitary and it needs to be done clean and right so that you get a good product. Now, before I get into cutting all of this, as I mentioned, this is a tutorial, so you're going to get it all. When we're cutting, Number one, we want to pinch the blade on that knife, wrap our fingers around the handle, basically choke up on that blade, okay, just like I'm doing. And what this does is it keeps you from the knife from twisting this way in your hand. You have a much better control over it. Once you get used to this, you're going to love it. The next thing is, is keep those fingertips right here from sticking out. So we're going to curve them underneath, making the center joint on our finger vertical, okay. And that way the knife, the side of the knife, can ride along that, okay? It becomes my guide and it never can touch my fingertips because they're curved under. And the thumb, it's kept up behind the fingertips, controlling the back of the food, okay? So, allowing me to do stuff like this. And it's nice. Now I'm making about half inch slices here, roughly. Okay, once I get those done, I'm wanting pieces about like this size for my soup. Now, I'm not going to sit here and cut all of those individually. No, no. I'm just going to line them up. Same cutting technique. A little bit longer, about an inch long. There we go. Perfect pieces to go right down into my soup. So if you would just cut up all of yours the same way and we're going to get into the next lesson which is on uh, cutting onions. Now also if you didn't cut or uh, if you didn't scorch the skin off of your chili and you want to cut it from the inside, here's something you need to know. See how they curve on you? They curl? Okay, pull up on that chili, curve those fingers under and do the same thing. Okay, see how I put my thumb under on the back and that was to lift the chili so it would lay flat. And when you cut it this way, your chili will cut nice and smooth for you with that skin on it, okay? But if you cut it with the skin facing out, unless your knife is just really, really sharp, it's going to resist the cut, okay? Guys, we're going to be handling our onion now, and I'm going to show you the proper way to dice an onion. Some people will tell you that this isn't all necessary, but let me explain something to you. Onion, just like a square, okay? If you're gonna make even pieces out of it, you have to cut it this way, this way, and this way, okay? You can't cut one of those methods out and have even pieces. It does not work, okay? So if you want to have nice, perfect, even squares and for all of them to cook the appropriate way, let me show you the technique that we use. Now I'm going to slide my knife right up the side here, just very gently. I'm going to remove these outer layer. You know, sometimes you get a piece of that outer layer that's thick on one part and thin on the next, and it's just to be avoided. When I have my onion down to this point, what I like to do is to fix this so I can work the three different cuts without the thing rolling around on me or giving me hell. All right, and there's different methods of doing this. However, the one that is taught most in most culinary schools and is accepted by most chefs is what I'm about to show you. Leave the root end intact. Number one, it makes the onion easier to handle. It holds it together as well as prevents the juices from weeping from it as quickly. The juices in an onion will come out of the root end much faster than they will from that stem end, okay? So I'm going to make a cut straight down to split this in half. Now my original cut was right here and I'm kind of lining up on that. It won't be exact, but it'll be close. So I've halved my onion. At this point, we have to make the cross cuts this way. Now the reason I'm doing that is because you have these sides here and here that need cuts running this way. Otherwise you're going to end up with some really long pieces if you only cut this way and this way. These pieces would be long and then these would be narrow and square. 
but the ones off the side would look like that. Okay, so that's the reason we cut on three axis. Okay, I'll run my knife in there. Now look what I do with those fingers. Put them together on top, hold the blade nice and narrow, and cutting away from you, do just like that. All right, now I would like to mention when it comes to right-handed, left-handed maneuvering of a knife. What you just saw me do helps me to show you something on camera. But if I want to do this safely as a chef, my knife needs to be turned not this way, but this way. The reason, if I'm cutting and my knife slips, it comes back towards my gut this way. But if I'm cutting this way and my knife slips, it goes away from me towards that wall. That's a better option, okay? So, if you're going to learn to do this technique, learn to do it cutting away from you, just like so, okay? So now you've seen it from two different angles. The next cut that I make is the cut running this way, running from top to bottom on the onion, and then when we get those cuts placed, then I turn it and we run our cross cuts and we get the most perfect dice you'll ever see. Go. You can already see we're getting a few pieces out of it. They sometimes do that. When I'm finished, all I have is a little bit of root left. And look, it's even, it's perfect. Little pieces that all come out identical. And that is the important part there. And there you have it, guys. Cutting an onion the same way your best professionals do it. Okay, guys, I want to teach you a couple of things that I know about garlic. First of all, getting into that bulb. Push down in the middle. You can shove down with the palm of your hand or just with your thumb to break it open like so. All right. Now, when it comes to how to remove that paper from the outside of your garlic, let me show you something that I came up with a long time ago when I was young. If you'll grip that clove with your thumb and first finger and twist in opposite directions very gently, you hear that crackling. And then that paper will simply slip right off the outside of that garlic clove. Just that simple. There's no fighting it. There's really no work to this, guys. And it is a flawless method to do your dehusking on your garlic, okay? Or to depaper it, whichever you call that. So I'll tell you what, just do three cloves of garlic that way. Once you get used to doing this, <laughs> you'll be thinking, why did I ever struggle with that stuff? Now, my technique on mincing garlic isn't really mine. This is an old technique. And, uh, it's an old French technique, actually. So what I first do is I remove that scab from the very end of the garlic. I just don't like it in anything that I cook, so I just naturally remove it. Again, holding that knife, normally you would pinch right by the blade and get ultimate control. But on this game, it's a little different, okay? So I'm gonna hold the blade back here and I'm just gonna gently crush the garlic. But when I do this, don't have your blade up. Have it flat or with the edge turned slightly down. Sometimes it'll spit the garlic out a little bit, but that's better than being cut. Now the reason I do this crushing procedure, that gets the garlic in a way so that when I start cutting it, it doesn't bob around on the board. Okay, it holds it in place for me. So I can chop it. Now the technique I'm using, if you'll notice, I've pulled back on my handle. Okay, I'm no longer choking up on it. And that's because I have, I don't need that side control this way because these fingers up here are going to take care of that for me. And they're going to push down on that knife to provide a good counter movement for my, my motion. My thumb turned under, okay? And then very gently work through that garlic. See that technique? Keep that thumb under. You can speed it up. easy that is. When pushing the garlic off of the blade, never lengthwise off like this, or simply wipe it off on the board. So 
So there you have it. Today you caught three different knife lessons. Wonderful methods to use. I'm going to mince this just a little bit finer. frame for you and I apologize. So there we have it. I have all my garlic minced up and ready for my pot. And that's a couple of teaspoons of fine minced garlic. All right guys, we did all of that work to get everything ready. And what we have there, as I mentioned, we were doing guard manze work. Guard manze is that cold prep. Boom, cold prep's done and we're ready to start our cooking. Now, guys, this is important. You wanna have all of this stuff done because you don't want your onions burning while you're busy trying to cut these or something, okay? If you do it in advance, you never worry about that and your cooking gets much better, all right? Always use this method. This is referred to, again, in that French system, that culinary uh, system that they use as the, uh, the guard system, and this is referred to as mise en place or all of your uh, things in its place, everything in its place, it's the, the literal translation. And that's where everything for a meal gets cut up, chopped, diced, prepared in whatever way it takes before cooking begins so that you don't have to stop cooking to go back to prep. And it's very important. Now let's get on first with putting our onions down in this pot. And what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna hit it with a little bit of oil onions in here probably a little more oil on top of that and guys what I want to do here is I'm going to put these onions over a uh, medium to medium high heat and I'm going to sweat these onions until they go from this kind of this whitish looking color that we have here down to a beautiful soft kind of a translucent color all right so this is a matter of just giving it time and when they start turning translucent that is when we start putting in our chilies. So if you would, check it about every two minutes, two to three minutes, no more than three. You don't want it caramelizing. We're not looking for brown. Well, I'm still early in my sweating. It's only been about five minutes. As you can see, we're getting a little bit of a change in this now, okay? And I'm getting a bit of yellowing, some slight browning from those sugars. So I'm gonna reduce my temperature just slightly. Well, as you can see, I got just a slight amount of caramelization, not really enough to affect this in any negative way. You certainly don't want really much of any more than that in there, guys. At this point, when we're starting to get this translucency in the, in the onions, and this has been about 10 minutes of sweating, it's time to put in those chilies. And just as we did with our onions, I'm going to add a little bit of oil. I'm going to stir it. I'm going to cover it. And we're going to sweat it just a little bit. And guys, what we're doing here is we are developing flavors. We are stacking flavors. We're stacking carbons. That browning that you saw, that, that caramelization, that's actually literally the stacking of carbons. And it's uh, a result of the sugars that are produced from the heat reacting with the onions, okay? And it's gonna do the same thing with those chilies. Okay guys, there's your close up. Look at those onions. You can see how they've become quite translucent now. You can see green through them and that's the cooking condition we want. So it's been oh, about 18 minutes Matt, now since I first started the onions. So the uh, poblanos have about eight minutes on them. Now, what I'm gonna do is we're gonna get our chicken broth in this and get it mixed in, let it come up to a simmer. At that point, we're gonna put in our other spices. And then after cooking it for a period of time, I will then use my cornstarch and we will thicken it on up. So as you see here, we have a very hearty soup. 
okay? Very good quality soup, I'll say this. This is, uh, like I said, this is an old favorite of mine. and something that I invented because I love chilies so much. Now guys, let's go ahead, get our spices down into this dish. What I wanna do first, put my garlic in here. We wanted about a quarter of a teaspoon of cumin. Now remember, cumin is a, a robust, very potent spice. Okay, there's about a quarter of a teaspoon. There we go. It's mixed in well. Also, if you need, or if you like to have a little salt in your dish, this is a good time to start putting that in. I'm gonna put in starting about a half a teaspoon. Later, if I feel that this dish needs a little more salt, I'll add that to it, but not until towards the end of cooking. Now all I have to do, I'm bringing this up to a boil. As soon as it boils, I'll reduce the heat to low. There it is, guys. We're up to a full boil. Cover it, reduce that temperature to low, and give it time. We're gonna give that about 30 minutes, and then we're gonna check the texture on our vegetables. All right, guys, it has come time for us to thicken our soup. It has been simmering now for 30 minutes. So what I have here is some regular old cornstarch, and I have a bowl with one third of a cup of water in it. And I'm going to pull out some of this cornstarch about roughly a tablespoon at a time. I'm gonna do two rough tablespoons, and I'm just gonna mix that into that water. At first, it may want to settle to the bottom and it'll feel like it's just forming a lump. Don't worry about that, guys. Don't worry. It'll, it'll mix in. Just keep working at it. And generally, cornstarch doesn't take too very long. You'll feel those lumps break down pretty quickly. You see, when I can get it and pull it up and there's no lumps in that liquid, like now, it's ready to be used. So that's all there is to producing your thickening agent for your soup. Wasn't that easy? Took just moments. And the thing of it is, is I don't have to use all of this or I can use more, just make another batch. All right, guys, let's go ahead and get, start, get started thickening up our soup. I'm gonna pour part of this in here, about half of it. All I have to do is bring this back to a simmer, or say it, a, a boil, and that cornstarch is going to thicken. The minute it comes to a boil, we'll see how thick it makes it, and we can just do another batch and increase it as needed. And the reason I show you this this way, guys, is so you can learn that you know you don't have to have some measurement in advance, regardless of how much fluid you had in there or how much you cooked out. You can always make it right. Pour the rest of this in. The reason that you don't want to put the cornstarch dry right down into the pot is simple, guys. It's, it's real simple. If you put that cornstarch in there, it's going to clump up. It needs to be mixed with cold water first. Now it's starting to take on that kind of a, a gelatinous effect where it's coating the spoon real well. The texture of the soup is now changing quite clearly. So as you see, I whisked that just a little bit. We had a beautiful release of green. We have a beautiful, thick, full-bodied poblano soup all ready to go guys the thing of it is is once you've got your thickener in there you don't have to do anything more the soup is already cooked everything is tender it's ready to go into the bowl so let's go ahead get some of this in our bowl that is beautiful green chili soup well guys, if you're looking for a light soup for a summer festive occasion or something hearty for the winter, it kind of works, you know? It's just a really cool dish. Whenever I do green chili soup like this, I prefer to serve it with some cheese and some chips, okay? I love the flavor of the corn 
as it becomes a part of the soup. It, it really enhances it and once you try it you'll see what I mean. And also a little bit of cheese. For some reason, I don't know what it is, cheese and chilies just seems to work together. So I like to use it. Now what I'll do is I'll put a little on mine and just kind of work it down inside of it and let it streak through it. See those lovely streaks forming? And there we have it. So guys, if you're looking for the best green chili soup recipe you've ever had, well, looks like you just found it. All right, guys, as I mentioned earlier, all of the quantities of everything we're gonna be using. I am starting with one quart of chicken broth. You can use chicken broth, you can use vegetable broth, take your pick, it works either way. We have a little bit of cooking oil, I'm using olive oil for mine, some cornstarch, a little bit of water to uh, mix that into, of course. One medium onion, any kind of onion you want. You can use white, yellow, red, just use some onion and you want that, oh, sort of a medium to fine diced as you saw. Uh, you want some cumin, about a quarter to one half teaspoon. I like to go light on it because cumin has a very earthy flavor and I don't want it overpowering anything else in this dish. The uh, garlic, three cloves of garlic, and our star of the dish, six to eight of these wonderful, beautiful poblano chilies, okay? Now I'll tell you what guys, that's it. Your measurements, thank you for watching the show. It was a really good one, isn't it? <laughs> Ooh, I'm gonna enjoy that soup. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Mm. Just the right combination of flavor. So as you see, we have a magnificent green chili soup. This is one you'll never regret making, guys. Oh, that is fantastic. It's sweet and you get a beautiful chili flavor and it's full bodied. It's a fantastic soup. One that you need to try. It's one that I'm going to just absolutely enjoy. I would like to say thank you very much to all of my subscribers. Guys, I appreciate you very much. Folks, if you haven't subscribed, well, please do. I've got great recipes. They come out every week. It's usually on Thursdays. And also, please click the like button. It tells me how you like it, or if you didn't like it, you know, whichever one you click. Leave me a comment if you want, and I'll do my best to answer you. And if you would, do just one last thing for me and have a good day. Folks, bye-bye. Well, there it is, folks. Texas Cooking Today video tutorial. I do appreciate you coming to my show and watching. If you would, please go to my channel, check out some of the other good stuff I have there. And again, thank you. Thank you very much for watching.